The extreme drought means the situation in the settlement is desperate. The only thing they have left to eat is millet, from which they make a bread, but this is not very nutritious. However, they know that during the dry season, hunting is much easier than in the rainy season. Kushai, Samgao, Tuka and Bo have decided to go hunting. At this time of year, the animals all gather around the few pools that still have water, and in all likelihood, they will be able to hunt something decent to eat. Namibia is one of the African countries with the greatest variety of wildlife. In the Atosha National Park alone, the largest in the country, covering an area the size of Belgium, 114 species of mammals and 340 different types of bird live. The heat is absolutely unbearable and the large pachyderms are hurrying to get into the water. The big cats, just like the bushmen, know that hunting is plentiful at this time of year. By the watering holes, the lions lie in wait, ready to attack, protected and camouflaged in the shade of a tree. Possible candidates for a swift death must be on the alert and are extremely jumpy. In December, the first rains will arrive and will continue uninterrupted to the end of March. During these months, a thick green blanket of grass covers the vast plains. The mammals spread out, finding a space in which to give birth, and once again life will return to Atosha. But for the moment, every drop of water essential for survival is precious. Only the large predators will regret the coming of the rains, for then Atosha will become one enormous quagmire, and in those conditions, hunting is an exhausting task. The elephants have to come here every day for their mud bath to get rid of parasites. They are the masters of the pool, and when they arrive, all the other animals know they must move aside. The bushmen also fear and respect them, and will always try to avoid them on their hunting expeditions. The next morning, the four bushmen get ready for the hunt. Their most powerful weapon is to be found below ground. With the help of the metal bars they have acquired through barter with other tribes in the region, they dig holes looking for tiny spheres which look as if they are made of ceramic. They are not easy to find, and the search may be quite long. They need at least ten of these tiny capsules in order to make the poison. <laughs> Back at the camp, the men get everything ready to concoct the potion. There's no rush. Rushing is a Western concept, and not one they welcome. Bo, the oldest of the four, says that in the West we have clocks, but they own time. The first step is to scrape and then pound the seeds from the Karamungarunga tree, which grows wild here in the Kalahari Desert. The result is a fine powder. While Tuka prepares the arrows, Kushai will take charge of the preparation of the poison. Their expert hands carefully extract the tiny larvae.
Once they have caught hold of the larva, they rip the head off. Then, like a tube of glue, they squeeze out the contents into a giraffe bone. These spheres are really the protective wrapping around the larvae of a type of beetle, and their body fluids produce a deadly poison. Little by little, they collect together the yellowish liquid, the appearance of amber. Sometimes they apply the liquid extracted from the larvae directly onto the arrows, but if they want to make a stronger poison, the process is a little more complicated. Some Gao choose the root of a Sanseveria, a plant which contains a powerful toxin and which, when mixed with the liquid from the larvae and the powder from the seeds, will give them a poison capable of swiftly killing a man and for which there is no known antidote. <laughs> The poison is now ready, and all that remains is to smear the arrows with it. Each hunter carefully covers the tips of his arrows, making absolutely sure the deadly mixture does not come into contact with any cuts they may have on their bodies. If it does, it can cause severe suffering and even death. The arrows are not large and the tips are not especially sharp because the prey will not be killed by the impact or the wounds the arrows make. The small metal tips are strong enough to make a small wound in the animal and the poison will then do the rest. The weapons are ready. All they need to do now is wait until the poison is dry. Meanwhile, Bo, who is also the shaman, scrutinizes the runes, looking for good omens, that the hunt will be successful and that the spirits of the dead are with them. The wooden tips will show them the way to their prey. They must perform this ritual if they wish to have good fortune and ward off the evil spirits. Kutoko, where should we hunt? The tips point to where the sun sets. That is where the zebras and the kudu are. The wood says that where the sun rises, there is a group of oryx and gazelles. The four hunters will set off in that direction tomorrow, before sunrise.